he just unshouldered the rifle and brought it up like this. I just started hearing gunfire over my head. The bullets were flying right next to my face. I was pulling my gun out of my holster and starting to return fire. I just did what I had to do to survive. I turned around and ran for the boulder. I put the boulder between me and the shooter. There was a large set of rocks kind of above Juan's position where that was where I was aiming for. That's where I knew he was close to. And I figured when I got closer, I would be able to gain visual of him and then we could work together to work our way out. He stopped shooting at me, ran down towards the wash, and I lost visual. So I got up out of my cover area from the rock and I began to run up the, up the ridge. I can hear Mr. Villa in, in the middle of, of a gun battle up there. And as I'm working my way up, I, he puts out one last transmission that I heard before his radio went down was, I'm hit, I'm down. Hundreds of thoughts, if not thousands of thoughts, go through your head within seconds. And the most predominant thought was, I didn't think I was going to be able to see my son. Again, I had a seven-month-old seven son at the time and a five-year-old daughter and my wife. I think that was the most difficult part of the whole experience. Um, but at the same time, all that I was thinking, I, I pulled myself together and I said, I gotta survive this. I'm not dead yet, I'm still breathing. And I kept telling myself that. And uh, I started to pull through from this black hole that I thought I was sinking in my mind. And uh, I think at that, this all happened within seconds. I, I was able to overcome that. Uh, and I attribute a lot of that for the training that I was going through, that I went through with the Border Patrol and my desire to live.